Hey guys, welcome back to Wheels Through Time. Today we're highlighting one of our high speed Harley Davidson 45s here on the drive for history. This 1930 Harley Davidson DLD hot rod. This machine was built for the Maxton Mile uh, land speed trials back in 2009 and it's an absolute ripper. As you can see, it's low, it's light, it's lean. You guys gotta hear this thing roar. I'm gonna share some of the details with you here real shortly, but first I want you guys to hear this thing go. What a sound. Here in a couple minutes, we're gonna get this thing out and do some hole shots. First thing I wanna do is tell you a couple of the details about what makes this machine so special. Now back in 2009, excuse me, 2008, uh, our good friend Buzz Canner from American Iron Magazine kind of got us hooked on the, the Maxton Mile land speed trials. Now, Eastern North Carolina in a little town called Maxton, they actually have land speed racing uh, for motorcycles and cars. They've got machines going upwards of 230, 240 miles an hour. Now, Maxton is no longer an event in Eastern North Carolina. It's put on by the East Coast Timing Association. And now since they've moved to a few different locations around the country, I know they've been in Ohio, they've been in Maine, but guys are still out there on vintage and new vehicles going fast for the East Coast Timing Association. Now in 2009, my dad, myself, and my pal, John Dills, John paints all the machines here at the museum, incredible fab guy. Uh, we built this 1930 Harley Davidson DLD to take out to the Maxton Mile. So speaking a little bit about the DLD, in 1929, Harley Davidson debuted their 45 cubic inch machine. Uh, the 45, the first 45 was labeled as the Model D. Uh, so various versions of the Model D, there's the D, medium compression, DL, high compression, and then the DLD is a high performance, high compression version of Harley's 45 from 29 to 31. So one of the things about this bike, the first thing you notice is that you're not your standard stock motorcycle. This thing has been stripped down, leaned out, and it is absolutely uh, as, as wicked of a little 45 as we could have built back in that day. Now, starting with the engine, guys, uh, the DLD power plant, uh, primitive in the sense that it's a total loss oil system. So you've got a little oil pump right down here. It's kind of just the feed system. So this doesn't have uh, an oil tank that circulates oil down to the engine and back to the tank. Uh, it's just got the little tiny abbreviated tank that we fabbed up right here uh, below the gas tank. And it just meters oil down into the bottom end. These things are meant to run on three, four ounces of bottom end or oil in the bottom end, uh, excuse me, uh, for the land speed trials. You can even go a little bit less than that knowing that you're not riding it for too long. Uh, so one of the neat things about the DL and one of the reasons that we chose the DL to do our land speed trial for the 750 class or the 45 cubic inch class was that the DL lower end is significantly lighter uh, than a Harley WL or a WR bottom end. So if I'm not mistaken, I think a WR uh, racing lower end and Harley made the WR from 1941 to 1952. Uh, it was Harley's kind of factory racing platform for Class C. Uh, the, w, uh, the WR lower ends weigh about 120 pounds, or excuse me, the WR engine weighs about 120 pounds. Uh, the DL engine weighs less than 90 pounds. So right off the bat, you're saving weight. Another thing uh, that the flywheels for the DLs are considerably smaller and it's just less rotating mass. You can hear this thing wick up real quick, fast acceleration. So the top end on this bike, incredibly special stuff. Uh, in 19, I believe 1932, 
two Harley Davidson debuted the Model RH. The RH was a factory hill climber uh, for really factory team members, preferred dealers. Uh, your average Joe from the public couldn't get an RH. That's how rare these machines were and how specialized they were. This top end is actually from an RH factory hill climber, or at least the cylinders are. DLs typically have a tiny little manifold. They're not made to go fast. They're not made to to flow uh, and this is a whole different setup. This actually has the same size intake port uh, and this very same intake manifold is a Harley Davidson VL or VLD. Those are both 74 and 80 cubic inch machines. Uh, so the top end, uh, you know, power is directly a, a function of how the machine breathes. So the deeper breath it takes, the more power it's gonna make. Uh, this thing flows like you wouldn't believe. High compression, these are what we call cross fin heads. You are notable by the the four fins right here. These are high compression, uh, designed by Sir Harry Ricardo. He was a, you might've heard us talk about Ricardo before he was a high speed internal combustion pioneer. And uh, Ricardo designed these heads for the high performance D and high performance R models that Harley would make through 1936. Uh, so the engine is about as wicked as they come. It's got big stiff valve springs, big old lumpy cams. Uh, it's low, it's light, it's lean. One of my favorite parts of this bike are the exhaust pipes. Uh, these two pipes, when we told uh, our pal Gerald Reinhardt, Reinhardt Exhaust, uh, when we told Gerald we were thinking about going out and doing some land speed racing, he said, you got to let me make you a set of pipes. So Gerald bent up and welded up uh, these uh, they're about 22 inches long, uh, stepped pipes, and they really help this machine put out the power. So uh, standard Harley-Davidson Linkert carburetor. And again, it's got this big old manifold here. Notice the frame and the chassis, okay? So standard DL model frame. It's your standard Harley 45 uh, frame. It's been lightened a little bit, a few tabs taken off here and there. Uh, standard three-speed transmission. Keep in mind, doesn't take these bikes long to get up to speed. The Maxton mile is a standing mile. You've got uh, one mile to speed up from a stop. Your speed trap where they record your speed is about 160 feet. Uh, so you don't need to maintain uh, high speed for very long. It's really, uh, you know, wind her up, get her to top speed and hold it through that 160 foot speed trap. So the standard three speed transmission, you can really take off on a Harley 45 pretty lazily and pretty easily. Uh, and it doesn't take long when you're up in third gear to get this thing up to high speed. So a uh, light little Harley single cylinder or D model fork, uh, common among racers, uh, probably five, eight pounds lighter than just about any Harley Davidson fork of the same era. Um, 18 inch wheels. Okay, so we run Avon Roadrunner tires. They're nice and provided for a nice and smooth ride. Now, again, I was telling you, low drag. This machine is absolutely made to go fast, and the less drag, the better. And again, when you got a machine like this of limited horsepower, uh, the better things spin and the freer things are, the faster you're gonna go. One of the reasons, uh, uh, excuse me, another reason that we chose the DL model engine is that it doesn't have that circulating oil pump. Now, circulating oil pump, it takes a considerable amount of energy uh, to pump oil down and to pump it back to the oil tank. So with the feed system here, the primitive total loss feed system, you don't have to worry about the drag that is being robbed from the motor in order to pump oil back to the gas tank. So you really just are mindful of what's in the lower end. Again, kind of a single use bike. So this thing wasn't really designed for versatility, designed for one purpose and that's to go straight and go fast. So tiny little gas tank here holds about a gallon, maybe a gallon and a half of gas. John Dills fabbed this thing up. He did an absolute stellar job on it. Uh, hand lettered by our good pal, Mark Peters up in Asheville, Peters Auto Art pinstripes everything here at the museum and uh yeah it's, it's it's about as stripped down as they come tiny little board track style dropped handlebars and uh made them a little bit skinnier than standard too so uh when my dad run this thing uh, at the max and mile my dad at the time was probably about 150 pounds small could tuck right behind this this uh, set of handlebars get low and stay out of the wind so really really neat stuff and and uh, it was really a ton of fun to watch him get out there. We made three runs only on this bike and managed to go over 95 miles per hour. So 1933, 
Harley Davidson took their model DL and the fastest speed they ever recorded was 88 miles per hour. So uh, we've beaten Harley's record from back in 1933 by seven miles per hour. Uh, first time out. So this thing here, and, and again, it's been about 11 years since we've been out to run it, uh, but a little bit of dialing in and we think we could probably break the 100 mile an hour mark, which was a pretty big number uh, for a 750cc Harley Davidson uh, back at that time. Now here on the left side of the bike, I wanted to show you some of the modifications we made for racing. Uh, now DLD engines, the DL engines, uh, street model. So this motor was designed to have a generator. They actually nicknamed this bike the three-cylinder Harley, not because it had three cylinders, because the generator was a vertical generator right here. Uh, and at a first glance, it almost looked like a, a bit like a third cylinder. Uh, again, we're running a total loss battery. This thing's designed to go straight down the track uh, for short runs. So no need for a generator. Uh, now out the bottom of the generator area is where the, har or where the DL model crankcase vent is at. This is what allows pressure to exchange underneath the cylinders. Uh, here on the generator housing or the generator perch, uh, we actually used uh, the perch, uh, built a plate over it and added another crankcase vent uh, for more scavenging. So what you want is negative pressure down below the cylinders. You don't want to fight atmospheric pressure uh, when you're winding up and making this thing go. So this right here helps that cause uh, big float pole. Now you're running wide open for duration. Uh, so what we actually had this float pole here back in the restoration shop provides a little bit more capacity uh, and keeps that float level higher as you go. Tiny little abbreviated shifter right here under your leg. Uh, and again, you're not shifting often. You've got two shifts um, and, and it happens fast. So a double kill switch is on this part of the rules. Uh, there's actually the kill switch here. Uh, right there on the thumb and then we've got the dead man switch. I've just got a piece of paper in it right now But there would be a tether tied to your wrist uh, And they just used a, a set of points here uh, for the contact and keep the points separated uh, The machine runs you pull the 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 paper out or the tether out uh, and the machine dies. That's to uh, Safety purposes in case you you fall off the machine also Another part of the rules was the return throttle. Now, Harley Davidson's of this era, all the way up through the 1960s, uh, didn't have a return throttle. It's really, you'd set the, the throttle where you want, and you can run down the road no hands till the gas runs out. This is actually set up uh, for the very same reason that we have a dead man switch, just for safety. In case for some reason uh, there's an incident, the throttle returns back. So really neat setup. That's all custom and it's done inside, not with a spring on the, the carburetor. So really neat setup. Just a single rear brake in the back, controlled on the hand. And uh, yeah, this thing is, is about as lean as mean, uh, lean and mean as they get. So let's get this thing fired up and, and uh, see how she burns. Fingers crossed, one kick. Harley Davidson DLD hot rod land speed racer one of these days we're gonna aim for 100 miles an hour make it happen thanks for tuning into the drive for history guys appreciate all your support if you haven't heard check out driveforhistory.com find a way to contribute check out our raffle 
maybe even our lifetime membership program. Remember, you guys help keep us the museum that runs. We'll see you next time.